Hello friends, in previous lecture uh, we have seen how uh, Appium works and uh, also we have seen how to launch Chrome and Safari browsers in Android emulator and iPhone simulator respectively. So in this uh, lecture we are going to see how to work with Appium capabilities like what is the significance of the capabilities that we need to pass. I have opened this Appium general capabilities page here and uh, you can see there are some capabilities that are applicable for both iPhone and uh, Android. So first one is automation name. Automation name decides which uh, driver is required like there are different types of drivers for example Serene Ride, UI Automated 2, Espresso, XUI Test, UI Engine. So all these uh, automation servers are available or automation drivers are available. So here we are telling Appium which driver we are interested in and then Appium will create a session for that particular driver. Next one is platform name which is uh, very obvious like uh, if it is iOS, Android, Firefox OS or Windows or Mac. So that is about platform name. Then platform version uh, we specify what is the version for example if you are trying to automate the iPhone simulator or uh, like uh, any device let's say iPhone 7, iPhone 8 we can specify which version of the iOS we are interested in and then emulator, simulator will be launched with that version device name is uh, name of the device that you want to launch like iPhone 8, iPhone 7 etc then app is a uh, path to the application uh, file like uh, in case of Android apps the file name is .apk so we need to provide the path of that apk file and then that apk file will be used to install the apps on this uh, phone and in case of iOS, uh, there can be .app file or .ipa file. Next one is full reset. Uh, it's very important uh, capability. Full reset, if you pass it as true, application will uh, get reset. So if you are trying to automate on the real phone, you have to be very careful because one day I was trying to automate the WhatsApp on my phone and uh, I didn't pass this capability. So by default, it will reset the app. That means I have to reinstall the WhatsApp again on my phone. So if you don't want uh, the application to get reset, you have to pass this capability full reset with the value as false. No reset. This capability is uh, related to app data only. The application will not be uninstalled, but only app data will be reset. If you pass no reset as equal to no. Browser name uh, is obviously we have seen in earlier example when we launched the Safari and Chrome we need to pass this capability to uh, tell which browser we want to automate or launch. New command timeout this is session timeout and by default this 60 seconds but you can uh, increase that. Then uh, language we can choose local we can choose UD IDs unique device ID. This is uh, important when we are especially doing the automation on multiple emulators let us say there are three emulators have launched on machine and uh, if you do not pass UDID what happens is Appium will choose first emulator and then send commands to that emulator but if you are interested in sending the commands to say emulator number two they need you need to pass the UDID of that particular emulator and then automation will happen on that emulator auto web view it is used to switch context to web view automatically and then print page source on find failure so if, if a failure happens print page source uh, if you want to print, print the page source that is the capability which will help you debug the issues in the application now there are some capabilities that are specific to android only for example app activity app package so android applications normally have app activity and package name so if you don't uh, know the, like uh, if the application is already installed on your emulator and you just need to launch that application then you can use these capabilities. Chrome driver executable it is very important if you want to automate the Chrome or if there is a web view in the application. This actually uh, specifies what driver we, are, uh, we want Appium to use when uh, trying to automate the Chrome. So this is very important because when you launch the emulator we don't have control on what version of Chrome is installed on the emulator. Let us say 
there is a Chrome 78 running on the emulator, then you will need to use the Chrome driver that is compatible with that version of the Chrome. So that's why it is very important. You need to download the compatible version of Chrome driver. You can find that on the Google's website, Chrome driver download website, the compatible versions of the Chrome driver. And you need to pass that path in this capability. Chrome options, obviously, uh, if you are familiar with this APM, uh, sorry, Selenium, then you must have uh, used this Chrome options, which help you to instruct the Chrome to behave in a certain way. For example, in full screen or uh, disable security flags, lots of uh, options we can pass or arguments we can pass when the Chrome is being launched. Android screenshot pathway to save the screenshots, auto grant permissions. This is used to grant the app permissions automatically. For example, uh, sometimes certain apps need the permissions like uh, permissions to use the camera or permissions to use microphone. So in that case, uh, a pop-up comes uh, saying uh, if you uh, and user can select allow or don't allow. But uh, with the auto grant permissions, uh, what happens is that pop-up doesn't come automatically. The permissions are granted. So this is very useful in automation because we don't want to like test the pop-up as such we just want to test our functionality of that so that's why i normally use auto grant permissions as true gps enabled is headless the gps is enabled is uh, for uh, to enable the gps is headless is used to run the tests in headless mode like android emulator will not be feasible then unlock type and unlock key this is used to set the lock key for your android emulator for example if you can set this fingerprint and unlock key as one then what will happen is fingerprint will be registered uh, with the emulator and uh, other apps list of apps to be installed so here uh, i've given the example uh, this is how we can pass the capabilities platform name iOS platform version 11.0 device name automation name app this is for the capabilities run, to run tests on iphone 7 and the capabilities run tests on only android emulator attached to the pc so in this case uh, i'm using the existing app calculator app and uh, this is the package name of that app and uh, automation name this is incorrect actually this should be app activity over there so that's how we can use this capabilities in APM if you have more questions this is very important concept basically because if you pass incorrect capabilities test will fail or um, it may have uh, like different behavior so you need to understand each and every capability and uh, what what is the significance of each capability if you have more questions on this let me know through the comments and uh, in the next uh, video or lecture uh, what we are going to see is how to inspect the android app so what we are going to do is launch android app and then uh, inspect uh, the elements like uh, if you want to identify the elements using xpath or any other methodology you need to get the source of that image uh, sorry source of that element so we are going to see how to access those things from the app for the Android and uh, also for the iOS as well. And we will also see uh, in the next subsequent lectures how to automate those apps as well. So it's going to be very interesting lectures uh, going forward. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video.